Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Welcome back to Sekiro Ultimate Guide, and today it is Ashina Raid 2, or Ashina Castle 3, whatever you want to call it. Now, we're going to go back here. Um, this is just to show you something, by the way. This is the mask fragment part. Now, again, if you've been picking up gold and banking it with people and not using the stuff you've picked up, you should be able to use or buy the mask fragment. Now, what that does is it will combine into the three the three parts of the mask fragment will combine into one, and then you can start trading five skill points for plus one attack power. It's a pretty important item, and it's definitely worthwhile getting. We can't get it in this guide because we don't get enough money and we've not been like we've not been farming or collecting money from downed enemies but if you've been doing that all game and you've been banking all your money that's spare with merchants selling gold you should be able to buy it and if not just a little bit of farming should get you it's worthwhile picking up now we head back to kuro's room and now we are going to go to the anti-chamber bonfire by just uh going along the rooftops dropping down a wee bit and we're back here remember here we love here don't we Oh yeah, this is what, the second time in the game to take all the bonfires off you? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's getting real fucking old, <laughs> It's getting real fucking old. <laughs> now, like the other twice you've been here... Uh, you should know how to do this by now. So this guy is now replaced by a lone shadow, but you can backstab him, so it's, so it's fine. So it's, he's not even a lone... It's just the same thing in a different outfit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically. Um, and then again, if you opened these doors earlier when you were in here, they should still be opened now. So a bunch of enemies will be fighting. Uh, you can also use the mountain, e the, the malcontent or mountain echo, whatever, to get get this guy's attention. And he'll like, yeah, Allow and then you, you can to just do that. grab him. Because you don't want to fight these guys. Even with an axe, these guys are a fucking pain in the ass. So. Because they're like a mini boss each. So we're going to grab that pellet. We're going to run and get here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the item that they're fighting around. And then just fuck off. Um, we don't need to fight these guys. Not worth our time. Who cares? These guys seem like they've got some shit to work out. We don't want to intrude. We also don't want to like press up against the wall. You just want to pick up the item. But the game has other ideas. I also looked like I, hadn't, I didn't pick it up there. You did. But though. yeah, I did. It's there. <laughs> so there's a couple of... There's a boss in this area, yeah, and we're going to do that, but... So, for some reason, this guy always seems to aggro on me coming up the stairs. I don't know what the trigger is, I don't know why he does it, but the point is we're going to accidentally That's a PlayStation death. thing, surely, because I've never had that. No, this is on PC. Huh. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing, man. I have no idea how he's seen me, but whatever. It's irrelevant. He might see you, he might not see you. Oh, maybe he sees you if you haven't taken the suppressed presence stuff. I, I don't know. I always I have that at this is. point, and I don't think you've taken it. Um, I, I don't think that should be the case, but... Suppressed presence re reduces their, like, field of view toward your, their cone of vision. I think it's, it's also possible that if those guys are, like, fighting downstairs, he'll just hear it, and that just yeah. gets them. So now we're going to fight this boss coming up. Now, this is, like, the Ashina guy that we've already fought, like, back before Genichiro. Except he's weak to fire, so we use the Sparkin Axe, which is specifically good instead of the other way that we killed him the first time. And uh, we can hyperframe through a lot of his attacks. He will do a lot of damage, but as you can see, it's kind of like the Ogre as well. You'll set him on fire and then he'll have like a little bit of like leeway 
where you can't set him on fire until he's like fully out the animation. But one Sparkin Axe should generally set him on fire, and then another one should uh, max out his posture bar for the visceral. Yeah, he's really that easy. But if you're trying to do this guy without the Sparkin Axe, quite difficult because if you get hit by his attack, he can almost one shot you. So you can just do the same as the last guy. It's the Ashen Across. When you see the the flash on his um, on his like. Katana sheath, you just double tap block and that's you got the deflect. Yeah, yeah. Max out his posture that way. It's easier to max out his posture. Just full block him. Just full deflect the entire fight. Don't even press R1 until his posture bar is maxed out. And that's the other way to do it. Or yeah, you just axe him in the face. So we uh, upgraded our attack here um, and our... Uh, prayer beads. Prayer beads. However, just to make a point, like we could have upgraded the attack before now. I just forgot to do it. Um, you can just do it immediately after the dragon boss from the last episode. But now we go back to, is that Kuro's room again? Oh, okay, so it's back to the uh, anti-chamber bonfire. And then I think we, it's, so basically like when you come here for the third time, all the shit that you've done this first and second time is even faster. You just like blast through it like super quickly. Wait, hey, there's nothing really to do that's any different. There's just enemies around that have been upgraded. Um, more of these like shredder looking dudes. Some of them have flamethrowers and cannons. Yeah, those ones are outside. And that's why you can equip the Divine Abduction to just like flip these guys around the way and then you can just backstab them immediately. Because these guys are like fairly difficult, but there's also like even bigger, stronger guys, but um, they're kind of rare. The ones with the dual katanas are the hardest. Uh, from what I remember from playing this, the ones with the two katanas are the hardest. So. Now there's like a little squabble outside or whatever. Um, you can like go on the rooftops and like go behind them and kind of like fight going up the stairs, like outside of the review, I guess. Because you can get like the backstabbed on like an amount of them, so. Puppeteer ninjutsu in your way onto the big cannon guy if you can. But... Now it's kind of annoying that he like, he like backstepped behind us, otherwise we could probably have got the backstab on that guy. It's fine. You got a guy with a gun. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's alright, isn't it? It's working out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now again, you can just use the axe and go to town on these guys, as ever. And these guys with like the blue robes will still attack you even if you save them, by the way. Like, this is just, there are no teams. Aye, aye. It's is. a total free-for-all. So un like, ungrateful. Now, there's a couple of items here. I mean, just like, let them fight amongst themselves, who cares. And, uh... Now we're going to go over this wall, and there's like, you can drop attack one of these guys. I recommend trying to drop attack the general, but uh, I fucked it up, so I wasn't able to, which is kind of annoying. However, the the gun guy will end up doing a fucking inordinate amount of damage to the general, so... <laughs> just napalm over him. So what you can kind of do is just like, get behind. There are dwarves that do that in Total War, by the way. Yeah. They're amazing. <laughs> and then you can just kill this guy in like a hit, so... Even if you don't get the drop attack, it literally doesn't matter. I had an entire formation set where it was like, my front line would cave in slightly, yeah. and form a sort of valley in the middle, and because of how buggy the Total War AI is, oh, sure. they're just fine with it. So it's just these two lines fighting in parallel with the enemy in the middle of two just mad dwarf ranks. Just, uh, no, it's just the front line that are holding them there. And then my torch guys come in the bottom and fill in the bottom and just fire flame up the middle of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything. One unit of flame bearers is like thousands of kills. So before we move on to the next area, we are going to do a boss that I would norm like, in other playthroughs or whatever, I'd be like, oh, just, that's like, you're meant to do it later because it's the, the, the last boss before the last boss. But, oh, okay, for this part, uh, you can backstab this one guy and then you can blood smoke and then backstab the general so you don't need to fight either of them because both of those guys are like the get the, the initial guy that you backstab is like a super powered version of the dual swords guy and he's such a pain in the ass so remember to backstab and use blood smoke just to make a point but now we want to do this guy here because this means that we will have um by the time we do the boss in the next area, we will have maxed out HP, which is definitely something we want to have. So getting this guy just now means we can max out HP for two of like the end bosses, quote unquote. I thought you would use blood smoke here and not puppeteer. Um, right, so you can't use blood smoke. No. Um, and you, so you, I'm like initially I used the puppeteer just to show you. 
but it's it's just kind of janky, right? So you can take the Gatchin Sugar, which allows you to get behind the general and puppeteer him, and you can use him to fight the boss, and that's pretty cool, I guess. Can't you blood smoke this guy and then backstab the general to him not let you do that? Uh, nah. That sucks. Can you not puppeteer the boss for a laugh? <laughs> uh, you also can't do that, which is No, odd, you can't because yeah. he's a boss. He's immune to it. So you can, like, drag the boss next to the guy that you puppeteered and, like, he'll, he'll do, like, an amount of damage. Uh, and that's, like, okay, I guess. It's the thing. It's using puppeteer ninjutsu even though it's basically only useful in two scenarios in the game. Like, because you can't backstab this boss, um, it means that you can, like, get one of his health bars taken away relatively easily by the other guy. But at the same time... You also can't trigger blood smoke on the boss because you didn't kill him. Where if you were to backstab <coughs> the boss instead of backstabbing to, like, puppeteer the other guy. Yeah. If you were to backstab the boss instead, you can't use blood smoke on him because he's not been killed by the visceral so now this was a little sloppy but you can just resort to the axe <laughs> yet again just resort to your like lower brain and just go straight into the r2 yeah. r1 <laughs> well so in this case it's r2 r1 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 r2 r1 r1 yeah. r1 but as you get, like, so here's the thing, like, you can, like, be, like, a smart ass about it and try and use, like, puppeteer or blood smoke or whatever. But ultimately, again, Axe is just the way to go for this guy because of his massive, massive wind-up frames from his, like, recovery animation. You know how I beat him? I stood on that little branch there. And so uh, that can he just also falls happen, off. yeah. So, here's the thing, right? Sometimes he's fell off for me. This is why I didn't put it in the guide. He fell off for me and then didn't die and then I didn't get like the prayer bead or whatever and then when I reset the area it was just like alive again in the same place so I don't know what the deal with that is sometimes as an example I have went on that branch and the guy that I've puppeteered just blasted them off the side and killed them but ultimately that is an unreliable method which is why I didn't explicitly show it in the guide the most reliable method is to just get your fucking axe out and go wild Now Just we are ignoring oh, it's the fuck it, like, Absolutely fuck these guys. Yeah, I don't want to fight either of those guys in a regular run, so I'm not going to fight both of them at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so we can use this, like, the, the classic, clearly not meant to be able to do it, but... I if just you, done it if anyway. you like jig the camera in a certain way, you yeah. can just make the game allow you to, yeah. So this allows you to just repel straight over to the old grave. And if you want. somehow your ankles can take it. Yeah. Somehow your your legs can take it. Could your legs not take it? Absolutely not. <laughs> so now there's like one final bit to go. At the very least, Sekiro should be like six inches shorter before he fired that. Like. Or at the very least, like well, no, because he stretches out in mid air, so it kind of it evens out. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he's just got the same like what body form as a slinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a fucking Stretch Armstrong, that's Sekiro. So we can just backstab this guy, which is quite nice, I guess. Save you having a Makiri count room a couple of times. Ah, it's just saving you time, innit? So now we're gonna go back to the... Serpent... Shrine? Yeah. And, oh, you're gonna cause a monkey war? Yeah, so this is the, the final monkey war in the game. This is also a good place to just, like, quickly farm if you want, because you can just go here, farm whistle. What? get money. Nah, it takes, a, it takes a while for them to kill each it other. It does, but you don't have to do anything is the point. I mean, you just come true. here, press a button and then put the controller down and walk away and so then come back. So, actually, the next, the best place to start farming money is actually the part just after this. It's, like, objectively the best place in the game to, like, farm money or experience. Yeah, that requires having to actively farm. Uh, it does, but you'll get a hell of a lot more out of it than doing it this way, I'll tell you that. Like, it's, you can actually get an inordinate amount of cash and experience from the next area, actually. I remember also, um, it's a decent idea to try and puppeteer the white monkey if you can. Because he's just like... Pfft. Well, in a sense, they all fight each other anyway, so you don't really need to puppeteer. I mean, if you don't use the malcontent. He fucks up a load of them really quickly. So, th they will take a while to fight each other, I guess. But, you know, are you in a hurry? I don't know. Fly in with the axe, who cares? Aye, dynamic entry, fuck it. 
And now that there's like two monkeys, you're totally fine. So this is another one where you need to like manually only, suck up. Only when together are apes strong. Oh, you don't need you don't need to man manually suck up. You just get the Jesus statue in here. Inventory. So that's why we, you come here. You get the Jesus statue and a dragon blood droplet. Um, neither are that impactful. So you, like, if you don't give a fuck about either of them, you can just skip. None of them matter. Because what does Dragon Rot do? It makes your NPCs cough. Yeah, that that is actually... Because your NPCs yeah. don't do anything, by the way. <laughs> so there's nothing in this part. You can just like run straight to the next bonfire. The next bonfire being the one that you is just before the snake at the beginning of the game. Just ignore all of these guys because who cares? Yep. They're shooting at each other. You've got other things to do. And none of it involves getting shot by either of them. Absolutely. So there's three more prayer beads to go, and we get that in the next area. The internal ministry, that's what those shredder cunts are called. Yeah, the interior yeah. ministry or something like that. Aye, I can't aye. remember. Something like that, yeah. They just win hands down, by the way. Like, they beat everything in the game, apart from maybe the purple guys. Uh, they're, 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 they're also ministry. No. Oh. Well, then, never mind. They yeah. just beat everything in the game. So anyway, that is it for that part. The next part is the rest of Sheena Outskirts. Hopefully this part was useful. And I guess we will see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.